welcome back to the channel. My name is Josiah, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that little intro there. Uh, a few color changes in there and whatnot. Uh, but today is Summer Stack Series Episode 4. So, if you have not been following my Summer Stack Series so far, uh, let me kind of recap it for you a little bit. Uh, essentially, so far we have begun by talking about what card stacking is and a card stack we're going to be covering mainly during the series uh, called the Size 7 Stack. And since we've talked about false cuts, false shuffles, and essentially we're just covering everything to do with stacking a deck of cards uh, pre before, before a trick starts uh, in order to achieve an effect. So uh, this series will go on for kind of the duration of the summer, maybe a little bit into August as well. But uh, regardless, uh, today I'm going to be talking about something I mentioned at the end of the last summer stack episode, which if you want to check out the, all the episodes in the Summer Stack series so far uh, and future episodes as they're published, uh, you can click the link up on screen. But anyway, um, I talked, I mentioned to you that I don't really use false shuffles and false cuts really anymore. And I said that in this next video I'll explain why. Here's why. Because whenever I do stuff with stacked decks, now I do it with a deck switch. Now, a deck switch is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you take one deck of playing cards and you switch it for another. Now, in the intro, or not, yeah, the intro that you saw just now, that is not the deck switch I'll be teaching. That deck switch was actually just a camera trick. I just did some camera editing to make that one happen, just for the sake of making a cool-looking intro. But the uh, deck switch I'm going to be teaching you, essentially, in the action of putting the card box away, you are you switch the two decks of cards. Okay, now it's going to seem like a very bold, very daring, very risky deck switch to most people, but it works really well in real life. Trust me, I've done this countless times for people and no one's ever caught me out on it. So without further ado, this is the Vital Deck Switch. Alright, so the Vital Deck Switch is a deck switch that was created by magician Calvin Booth, who I've mentioned here on the channel before. I mentioned him in my Camber Oil tutorial. Now, in case you're wondering where that Camber Oil tutorial is, I did take it down off of YouTube simply because I felt like I didn't do I didn't do a really great job teaching at all. Uh, the video was something I'd planned earlier and then when I got and I just kind of rushed through making the video wasn't really great quality. The teaching wasn't super clear. Uh, maybe one day soon I might make another updated ver tutorial for it. But for now, I've decided to take down that tutorial, uh, and it's not available anymore. However, I can assure you, I will leave a link in the description to Kevin Booth's original tutorial, which is much better, much clearer. You can really understand how it, uh, how Camberwell works. But anyway, uh, so the Vital Deck Switch, um, essentially, uh, the deck switch is a gimmicked deck switch. Now, there are certain deck switch, deck switches, uh, that, uh, are sleight of hand deck switches. For instance, uh, you could have a deck palmed here and you kind of switch it out like that. So as I said, this is a deck switch, it's a gimmick deck switch, and just to show you, I'm actually going to pull out two vital deck switch gimmicks. These are both vital deck switch gimmicks. Now as you can see, right alongside, you know, several other normal card boxes, these two gimmicks, they look virtually the same, there's not really much difference. Uh, and from, and if I actually take the camera here real quick, you'll note that, hold up, there we go, you'll note that from a whole bunch of angles, and I can't take you around the other side, but from a whole bunch of angles from around either side of the table, the gimmick is pretty much invisible. And that's something I really love about this gimmick. I mean, it's... From the back side, from the magician's perspective, it's obvious the gimmick is there. But from pretty much anywhere your spectators are going to normally be, the gimmick is completely invisible. So, uh, without further ado, let me reveal the gimmick and then I'm going to show you how to make it. So essentially, the gimmick is this. It's just a shell of a card box with an open back. And essentially what you do is you have your, is you have your cold deck uh, and... A little bit of uh, analogy for you here, or not analogy, but a dictionary real quick for the terms I'm using. When someone says cold deck, that's the deck that's going to be switched in. So for instance, uh, in our case, this would be your stacked deck, okay? And then your hot deck is the deck that is 
or like normal. So uh, it's really nice to do a deck switch because what's amazing is that you can have your spectator shuffle your hot deck and then switch it out for your cold deck. And that's basically how you do that. Okay, so uh, we'll cover this more in depth later, but for now, let's talk about how to make the gimmick. So in order to make the vital deck switch gimmick, you're going to need uh, a, a card box that you're an older, maybe card box that you're willing to ruin and gimmick up. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, and you're going to need an adhesive of some time, some kind. I recommend you can use glue. Uh, I recommend using regular scotch tape, however, for some reason right now I can't find my just regular scotch tape, so we're going to use double-sided tape instead. But uh, the idea is the same. So. Uh, basically, what you're going to do to begin the process of making the gimmick is uh, you're going to begin. Uh, when I first made my first gimmicks, what you'll notice is I actually took the flaps of the card box and I taped them in on the inside. Um, but instead, you should just cut them off. It's just easier. So what you're going to do to begin making your gimmick is you're going to begin by... Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're just going to begin by cutting off the face of the card box. So uh, all you're going to do to do that is you're going to cut with your scissors and it's helpful to cut right along the edge where the card box is folded after it's been manufactured. And you're going to cut right down there. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. And don't cut yourself. You might think, oh well I've used scissors before. I've can't cut myself. I cut, I've been using scissors for years and I cut myself, so just don't do that, okay? Although maybe it'd just be me. So anyway, you cut until you get the beginnings of the shell where you take this front face part of the card box off. So you'll take that. Then you're going to cut off these flaps here just to make it easier on yourself. Uh, you can just tape them in like that, but I just find it easier to just cut them off completely. So, you have that. Okay, and you have the beginnings of your shell. Now, one thing you might notice is that the back end of the card box, especially if you're using United States Playing Card Company boxes, this part will just fall apart. That's because the glue, if you pull on the glue a little bit, you'll find the glue doesn't stick very well, okay? So you'll find that your card box might end up looking something like this. We'll fix that. Don't worry, okay? So anyway, uh, what you're going to do from here is uh, uh, before I continue actually I'll be right back I'm gonna see if I can find some regular scotch tape because uh, this whole double side tape thing is not gonna work a few moments later okay good news I found some regular scotch tape so we're not gonna be using double side tape we're gonna be using scotch tape and I recommend you use clear scotch tape just for the sake of it so uh, we're gonna begin uh, obviously you might want to trim off some of this excess stuff that might kind of fall off a little bit okay Okay, just going to trim off some of that excess. Once you've done that, we're going to fix up the back end of it so that it's nice and secure. So what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to fold it in. Is we're going to fold one side in like this so it's like on the card box. And we're just going to grab a very small piece of tape. We're going to put some tape right here on the inside of it as we get it back into its regular shape. Okay? Something like that. You might have to fold some tape over the end. Uh, it doesn't have to be the best job taping. It just has to hold one side together so it looks like a normal card box. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and once you do so, uh, you should have something pretty secure back here. We're just going to secure these sides a little bit more by adding an extra piece of tape around the outside corners like this. So we're just going to take tape and put them along the corners here like that on the outside uh, and that way we have the corners taped inside and outside okay and don't worry about the tape being visible I've never had a problem with that no one's ever called me out on it and even so you know spectators keep their cards for years and years and they never replace them so you know to just an average spectator even if they notice tape, no one's going to call you out on it because honestly it's not that big of a deal, so it's a casual thing. And, you know, it, even they might think, you know, it's just uh, something you're fixing up on your card box anyway. It really doesn't matter, okay? I've never had anyone call me out on that, okay? So anyway, once you've done uh, your tape job here, 
Uh, then we're going to work on the front part of the card box. So essentially your shell's already done. I mean, it's pretty much done. But one thing you'll notice is it's not as convincing because if you notice, when the card box was together, you had that sticker there, you had the top flap of the card box, okay? Uh, and even if you're one who one of the people who turns off their stickers, you still have that flap there, okay? So we want to mimic that when the card's shell is here because it's missing here. So if you just see the green, that's going to kind of give away the card. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off this top flap of the front of the card box. Uh, and we're just going to tape that right down there like that, right where it should be. So that's about where I need it to be. So I'm just going to take a piece of tape. And I'm going to look. Well, that's not going to work. I accidentally took it off, but we'll try that again. Okay, there. Uh, do a better job taping than me. That's that's a that's probably a good tip. Okay. So you tape it, and you might want to tape it a couple of times on either side. And then one thing you might notice is that it's still going to flap. The flap can still is still isn't connected here. So you're going to want to put some tape right here between the, this part of the card box and the rest of the flap. So if you have double sided tape that's helpful. If not, you can just take a piece of tape and you can roll it up into a tape loop. And you just want to stick one tape loop down there, one piece of double sided tape, uh, just to hold the flap to the card box. So once you've done that, then you're just going to cut off uh, this part here. That would be normally like that on the card box. I don't know how to describe it. The top flap of the top flap. I don't know. Uh, and you might want to trim off a little bit of the excess. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, you have now completed your vital deck switch gimmick. So at this point, you just need to throw away the trash, which I will do in a second here. The one part I hate about the vital deck switch gimmick is because of the trimming with the scissors. I get paper stuff all over my card mat. But that is essentially all there is to making a vital deck switch gimmick. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's just learn how to use the gimmick. Alright, so when you're practicing with the de uh, the gimmick, with doing the switch, uh, it's helpful to use two different decks. Now normally, when you're doing um, a trick with a deck switch, you're going to want to use two of the same deck, okay? So in our case, uh, for example, since we're using Summer Stack, the way I would use it in context of doing using a stacked deck is I would have one deck of cards that's stacked, maybe a red bicycle deck that's in size 7 stack, and for tonight, this is another red bicycle deck that is just in a random order. I can have this be my hot deck and my cold deck be under the gimmick so I can so the spectator can shuffle this, they can cut it, they can do whatever they want and then when I take it back all I have to do is ring in this deck in place of this deck. Okay, So uh, all you have to do before the trick, before the switch happens is you just have to load your cold deck underneath the gimmick like this, okay? Uh, and one thing you might want to do when you load the gimmick is you want to make sure that you don't have cards peeking out like this because that gives away the gimmick. You want to make sure everything's nice and square inside it. And if you do that, you should notice that if you have the cards just resting, the gimmick resting like this, maybe it's the whole visibility thing, as I mentioned earlier, still works, okay? So, essentially, uh, that's what's going to happen. So our cold deck is in there. Well, well. I gotta pick a card up that I drop. But anyway, uh, our cold deck's there, and we have our hot deck. Now, one thing that I never really liked about Kevin Boost's Vital Deck Switch tutorial that he released on YouTube is that he never mentions how you get into this position, okay? Uh, so there are many ways to get in this position with um, the cold deck underneath, okay? Uh, so uh, you can't really put this in your pocket because the cards are just gonna kind of smear everywhere. So one thing I actually like to do is when I'm pulling with my card mat, I just have this set out in the first place uh, uh, just to have, and when people come over, when I perform for people, I just have it already prepared. Uh, and then another thing I do with my card mat is I have this little drawer here, which is really helpful. I have a piece of the cards in there. I don't know why that's in there. Ignore that. But anyway, I put my vital 
deck switch and put my loaded gimmick in here. And then while I hand this out to be shuffled, I just open my drawer slightly and I take out the gimmick and I set it down or before the trick begins or anything, okay? Now uh, that's a very simple way of doing it. Uh, one way you could do it from your pocket, if you have very tight back pants pockets or something, you could stick it in upright like this so it doesn't jiggle around so much. You come in and you just kind of casually grab it and bring it, and you just kind of casually grab it and bring it out and set it down as if it's just another card box. Uh, those are just a couple of ways you can do it. Don't ever put it um, down like this in your pocket and only do the pocket version if you have tight like jean pockets because if the pockets aren't tight enough to hold it in place, it's just going to jiggle around and you'll find that, you know, the cards are just going to come out and it's just going to be a crazy mess. Okay. Um, uh, you could also use uh, the idea of the magician's uh, performance bag. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of that idea, but it's the idea of using a bag where you have your items performing in. You could have this loaded in some kind of compartment or whatever inside the bag. As you're rummaging around, you could bring out your deck, you could bring out a couple decks of cards that you're going to perform with. And as you do so, one of the things you bring out is your loaded vial gimmick. You bring it up here, okay? Now here's the deal. What I love about this deck switch is that it uses a card box, okay? A card box is such, is, it's the kind of item that spectators wouldn't ever suspect, okay? It's just a casual item. It's just there. It's something you take for granted. And so whenever you do something, you utilize the box as a, a part, an essential part of your effect, for the magician at least, it always really is quite interesting because no matter whether that card box is here or in my pocket, it it's just taken for granted, okay? The spectators don't notice or care where it goes, okay? So using it to do your deck switch is really great. So anyway, basically what you're going to do is you're going to begin by obviously having the hot deck shuffled or whatever you want it to do, okay? But either way, once the hot deck is handed back to you, what you're going to do is you're going to grab it in an overhand grip position. But you want to grab it in a kind of overhand grip position, though it is very similar to a position that you would do a mercury card fold from. Uh, so basically, you want all your fingers, not just your thumb, but all your fingers in this overhand grip kind of hanging way over the side. So instead of having it at your fingertips like in a normal overhand grip, you want it in a very deep overhand grip like this. It's the kind of grip that you could squeeze the cards and have them bow upward like that, okay? You just have it right here. And all you're going to do is you can ask your spectators a question or um, you can hand them a Sharpie or you use any sort of misdirection that you want. Uh, and an example of something I would probably use to do this is uh, I would be having them write something down uh, or... Um, Sorry, I had a brain fart here. Let me give give me a second. A few moments later. Or you could just uh, generally uh, just kind of talk to them, gesture with your hands, okay? Just casual misdirection, okay? No one's going to be looking down here when you have the moment, okay? Uh, and, you know, obviously, as I mentioned a minute ago, uh, the best way is really uh, the best type of misdirection, the easiest one at least, uh, if you're a beginner or that you, and you're kind of new to misdirection, just ask your spectator a question that they have to turn inwardly to think about, and that will help to distract them. So anyway, you're in this overhand position. You come over on top of the card box, and basically the idea is, and you're, this is where internal monologue comes in. This is something that uh, I've started doing after hearing about it from Daniel Garcia on his project uh, with Mintbox. Um, it's the idea of using uh, internal monologue, like an internal, uh, an internal voice that you're kind of directing in your head, telling you the justification of what you're doing. So this is real helpful as a magician because instead of worrying about doing this so I can do this, it's it's the, not the magician sleight of hand thing. It's I'm just doing this. Okay, so it's just the idea of while it is actually for a sleight of hand or illusion purpose, uh, I'm using internal monologue so that I can run a justification for it that will help me to aid in the misdirection and uh, not having a performance that will draw attention to this because the less I draw attention to it myself, uh, the less the spectators are going to be paying attention. So anyway, you come here, the, I, the internal monologue is, I'm going to set the deck here so I can take the card box and put it away, okay? But what you're actually going to do is with the deck in hand, you're going to pick up just the gimmick, leaving this deck behind, so now you're holding uh, your hot deck and your gimmick, 
and you're going to put that away in your pocket, your back pocket. Uh, for me, when I have my card mat, I typically stuff it in this drawer. Okay, and just close it like that. Either way, I'm left with the cold deck right here. And don't stress ringing in the deck, doing the actual deck switch, okay? And it might seem like it's very bold, uh, very daring, very risky. It works really well, trust me. And if you don't believe me, okay, just get two average decks, two decks that don't really matter. Put one deck underneath the gimmick uh, and just try doing it. Just try doing it. Try, use the tips I've been providing here. And just try doing the deck switch, and you'll find it's very, very easy to do, and it's, you can get away with it so well. So anyway, again, you come here, you just pick up the gimmick, and you go away with it. That's it. There's nothing else you need to do, okay? Don't stress about this part. You just do it, okay? And don't be like kind of quick speed, okay? And don't do it super slowly either. Just kind of grab it and casually put it away, okay? And it's helpful to do this not standing up. But if, you, if you're standing up, it's helpful to put it in your back pocket. If you're seated, it's helpful to slip it in a pocket or into a drawer or a bag somewhere. Uh, if you're seated behind a table, this gives you a really great uh, way to cover this because you only have to worry about someone glimpsing it this way. Once it's passed here, no one can see, so long as your spectators are around in this semicircle like I would normally keep them. No one can see it now, so you don't have to stress. And that's why I love having a, a card mat that has this drawer, because I can just uh, stick it in there. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the Vital Deck Switch. Uh, leave a comment down below if you liked it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, so, uh, about the card mat situation. Uh, in case you're wondering, this card mat was built for me by uh, my grandfather. Uh, I... I was talking with him during camping, uh, he's, he's a really great carpenter, and uh, I said, um, I was talking about it, and he said maybe he can make one. So uh, I sent him some ideas for it, and soon enough he came up with this, which is really great. I really love this a lot. My bad, the camera shut off on me, but anyway, uh, I, I really love this uh, uh, this idea. It has It's really, all it is, is it's just this wooden base with this drawer in it. This drawer comes all the way out. It's completely hollow on the inside. Uh, but it's this wood all the way around it, uh, and then it has um, just like a, a cheap uh, uh, regular card mat, like the kind that you would flip over, like a portable one, uh, just kind of glued in here. Uh, and then there's little these, these little walnut things around the edges, just to add a little bit of um, extra finesse to it, I guess. Uh, but this is a really great card mat. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot get this exact one. This one was custom made for me. So anyway, I'll leave a link down below to a card mat that is not exactly this. This was a custom made, uh, but I'll leave a link to um, one that is very similar to this where it has the drawer situation, so you can use those drawers to your advantage. All right, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Um, so that is episode four of my Summer Stacks series, and I have some exciting news for you. You might have been waiting, you might not have. Either way, um, this Summer Stack series, I've kind of been covering the ways to uh, shuffle or have a spectator shuffle a deck of cards or cut it uh, and still have the order and uh, still be able to use a, uh, uh, a stacked deck. So uh, in my next video, we kinda, we've kind of kind of gone through everything we need to get through. So in my next Summer Stack episode, Summer Stack episode 5, I will be teaching a trick using the Psy Stebbin stack. So that is going to be the first, uh, it's going to be the first trick uh, of the Psy Stebbin stack series, or not the Psy Stebbin stack series, the summer stack series. So hopefully you enjoy it. Um, and uh, leave a comment down below for the end screen that's going on right now. If you liked this end screen, uh, and also there are a couple other things that I used in this video uh, that are new. So if you like the new little things I had in this video, I added an animation, I added an end screen that is going on right now, uh, and I also added uh, I also added that little intro at the beginning. Tell me if you liked all that, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.